Good morning, everyone. My name is David, and we are going to read some awesome stories today. These are some of my favorites, and I hope you love them too. So settle back and let's listen to some good stories. The first one that we're going to read together is by one of my very favorite authors. His name is Eric Carl. And you might know him from the book, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, but this is also a terrific story. It's called Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? So let's start. I love the colors he uses. Beautiful. I'm going to try to hold this up as best I can so that you can see the pictures while I read, okay? Brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? I see a red bird looking at me. Red bird, red bird, what do you see? I see a yellow duck looking at me. Yellow duck, yellow duck, what do you see? I see a blue horse looking at me. Blue horse, blue horse, what do you see? I see a green frog looking at me. Green frog, green frog, what do you see? I see a purple cat looking at me. Purple cat. Purple cat, purple cat. What do you see? I see a white dog looking at me. White dog, white dog, what do you see? I see a black sheep looking at me. Lots of colors in this book. Purple, white, black. Black sheep, black sheep, what do you see? I see a goldfish looking at me. Goldfish, goldfish, what do you see? I see a teacher looking at me. Teacher, teacher, what do you see? I see children looking at me. Children, children, what do you see? Look at all the different colors of the children. We see a brown bear red bird, a yellow duck, a blue horse, green frog, a purple cat, a white dog, a black sheep, a gold fish, and a teacher looking at us. That's what we see. And look at all those colors again. Isn't that beautiful? All the colors of the rainbow. Gosh, I love this book. I want to mention something. We're going to read a couple more books. But uh, something that you should know is that these books have been provided for us by the really wonderful folks, including Glenda Childs, the owner of the Doylestown Bookshop. And any of these books, the bookshop is not open at this moment in time, but you can order them online and they'll be delivered to you 
So let's get to our second book. Now, this is one by a local author. She lives right here in Bucks County, Jennifer Hansen Raleigh. This is a relatively new book, but it's one of my favorites. It's called Claudia and Moth. Ready? Let's explore it together. This is what's called the title page. Look, this one's actually signed by the author. That's pretty awesome. Okay, ready? Claudia loved butterflies. In the summertime, she went to the park every day so she could spy on the blue ones, admire the yellow ones and the, with the purple dots, and chase after all the pink ones. When it was time to go, she always asked, can I bring one home? And her mom would reply, no, that wouldn't be right. One day, her dad bought her a painter's box. He said, paint the butterflies and bring them home. So she did. Looks like she lives in a big city. Maybe New York? That looks like Central Park to me. As it turned out, she was quite good. Look at all those folks hanging around watching her paint. She had a knack for it. And I'm gonna make sure I'm not missing pages. Pardon me. And she brought the butterflies home. Wow, look at her room. Look at all those beautiful pictures of butterflies everywhere. Look, and there's the painter's box her dad got for her. Oh, but wait. You see something outside the window? Let me show you this. This is an important clue. You see that around the lamppost? Worth paying attention to. Okay. But when the summer ended, as summers do, the butterflies bid farewell. Once again, Claudia asked to bring one home. No, it wouldn't be right, said her mom. Don't stop painting, added her dad. But Claudia didn't feel like painting anymore, and she stashed her paint box out of sight under her bed. And as winter arrived, there was truly nothing left to paint. Until one dreadfully cold day, Claudia's mom insisted she go put on her warmest sweater. Ugh, it was big and brown and completely embarrassing. But to her surprise, somebody had been nibbling pretty patterns into it all summer long. And when she spied the little moth, it felt a flutter, she felt a flutter of excitement. That happens sometimes. Moths get into our clothes over this summer. Hmm. But this was cool. This made Claudia excited to see this moth. Look at this. Oh, click, whoosh. She couldn't catch it. It might not be right, thought Claudia. But Moth made the perfect butterfly. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? 
until he discovered the window. Ping, pong, yikes, whoa, whoops, oh, hey, ah. And the, and the day went along something like that. Then the sun set and quite miraculously, Moth sat quiet and for one tiny moment, so did Claudia. They must have been exhausted. But when the street light flickered, when it flickered on, Moth started all over again. Ping, ping, pong. You remember the street light in the picture earlier? Hmm. Told you. But it's, it's only snowflakes, said Claudia. She opened the window to show him. And in came the snow. Whoosh. But out flew Moth. Right for the lamppost. Claudia burst out of the apartment and ran down to the street. The city was never so quiet. And the new snow was never so endless. She blinked and blinked, but it was impossible to tell Moth from a snowflake. The pretty patterns melted too quickly into her mittens until plop. Only Moth wasn't quite a butterfly anymore. Claudia rushed him back inside and laid him under her light to dry. Then something magnificent happened. He flittered, he fluttered, he shined, and he shimmered, just like the snowflakes. It was time for Claudia to paint moth. So, she could always remember him. What a great picture. And what a great book. You think we have time for one more? I don't know. I'd love to do one more, would you? Okay. Because this is one of my absolute favorites. And when we get together every week, what I'd like to do is share really great classic children's picture books with you. That'd be all right? Okay. This one is just one of my very, very, very favorites. Where the Wild Things Are. This is by Maurice Sendak. I feel like this a lot. The night Max wore his wolf suit and made mischief of one kind, And another. His mother called him. Wild thing. And Max said, I'll eat you up. So he was sent to bed without eating anything. <laughs> Those parents. That very night, in Max's room, a forest grew. And grew. And 
and grew until his ceiling hung with vines and the walls became the world all around. And an ocean tumbled by with a private boat for Max. Look at my special effects. And he sailed off through night and day. I wonder where he was going. It, oh my gosh. In and out of weeks and almost over a year to where the wild things are. Wow. Look at that. And when he came to the place where the wild things are, they roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their big, terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. Hmm. <laughs> so Max said, Be still! And tame them with the magic trick of staring into all their yellow eyes without blinking once. And they were frightened. And they called him the most wild thing of all. And made him king of all the wild things. <laughs> and now, cried Max, let the wild rumpus begin. Oh, I wish I had special effects. Look at that. That is a rumpus if I've ever seen one. That's rumpusing. Oh, yes. Here's more rumpusing, if you can stand to watch. You can just imagine, can't you? No, oh, and wait, look at Max, the king of the wild things. <laughs> They're having a parade that day. What a rumpus. Now stop, Max said, and sent the wild things off to bed without their supper. And Max, the king of all wild things, was lonely. And he wanted to be where someone loved him best of all. Then all around from far away across the world, he smelled good things to eat. So he gave up being king of where the wild things are. But the wild things cried, Oh, please don't go. We'll eat you up. We love you so. And Max said, No. The wild things roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. But Max stepped into his private boat and waved goodbye. And sailed back over a year, in and out of weeks, and through a day. and into the night of his very own room, where he found his supper waiting for him. That is one of my very, very favorite books. And I'm so thankful you joined me today for this story time. We're going to be doing this Thursday mornings 
at 10 o'clock. It's great to stay inside and enjoy stories. Um, on a day like this, though, I really encourage you, if you can, to go outside and enjoy the terrific weather and uh, get some exercise, get some fresh air into your lungs. Um, but I do have a special request for you. First of all, let me say again that any of these books and more are available through the Doylestown Bookshop. You can order them online, doylestownbookshop.com. And I really, really appreciate the Doylestown Bookshop allowing me to borrow some books to share with you today. Until next time we meet, thank you, be well, know that you are very special and unique and that you are loved. Okay, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.